thank you uh, sapnil karnik sir and uh, sujit for inviting me here i have a couple of cases and i have to admit uh, that uh, these have been discussed previously in our senior surgical so i think jay you must jay madam have all seen these cases previously but these are cases uh, where a pathologist and a clinician have to interact so these are those kind of cases some are dilemma some are sorted out some don't get sorted out even after extensive work up extensive discussion with radiologist so these are cases where an mdt discussion uh, could lead us and the, the the pushing of the clinician the pushing of the radiologist or the pushing of the pathologist uh, we reach a diagnosis so these are some uh, uh, kind of cases and that's why we i have labeled it as going the extra mile and when you go an extra mile you uh, discover certain uh, things uh, in certain cases uh, so this is the case one this is a 52 year old gentleman who presented with history of pain in the left knee for one year outside imaging was suggestive of synovial ganglion cyst the imaging also picked up a well defined lesion at the upper pole of right kidney measuring 3 into 2.8 cm which is a, a, a t1 tumor uh, outside pet ct said a diffuse synovial thickening with increase fdg uptake in region surrounding left knee multiple lytic lesions at the patella lower end of femur upper end of tibia with no F, not much fdg uptake so this was the clinical presentation and these are the mri pictures i am not a radiologist not uh, how you can see that there is some uh, anomalies here uh, which which you can see uh, again picture to show that the kidney also had the small lesion rather rather small small lesion which you see in the kidney on uh, contrast enhanced ct uh, outside biopsy from the knee joint was sent and this is how it looked at a low scanner picture uh, so you can see the strands of these tumor cells within the pink stroma again these were in bits and pieces like these with lot of stroma and some blue looking areas uh, which are probably looking like trabeculae and small glands even at this power uh, so this is how they looked on the scanner view and we went to higher power you saw that they were forming tubules they were various size tubules smaller ones elongated ones and the stroma was rather desmoplastic to hyalinized at places and these are the tubules you can see that these are gland forming nice tumors nucleoli are very well seen in this power so uh, and then there were some cells within this glandular arrangement uh, which were more anaplastic compared to the other tumor cells a lot of stroma spindle stroma in between uh, but generally hyalinized and the impression was was of a uh, of a adenocarcinoma which we see again higher power to show how these tumor cells look they looked highly malignant uh, some had anaplastic smudgy nuclei uh within the glands there were a lot of atp are within the glands uh, you can see that you can see how bizarre they were looking vesicular nuclei very prominent nucleoli so this was the appearance so we were worried and outside biopsy said that the tumor cells are immunoreactive for pax 8 so remember there is a kidney tumor also and this tumor was pax 8 vehement in cam 5.2 so overall it was suggestive of carcinoma of renal origin metastatic possibly clear cell this was the outside uh, report what what we received cd56 was focally positive ttf1 was positive so this was what was their outside report so it was a confusing thing is it a lung primary is it a, uh, a renal primary because there was a renal mass so this is the mdt everybody is sitting and so small renal mass generally you can have metastasis not that you don't have but generally a 2 to 3 cm renal mass does not throw metastasis that was an unusual site of a uh, knee joint with some patellar and femoral involvement so this is the euro multidisciplinary team and we thought and we were racking our brains what to start tki or should we do a renal biopsy what is the next step in any case the morphology did not suggest any renal typical renal primary so something which can have tubules and spindle stroma is a is a mucinous tubular spindle carcinoma of of kidney uh, but they don't have these anaplastic kind of nuclei in general although there is a high grade variant of mtsc in kidney so that was the question renal mass something in patella something in knee so that's the way. so we did a ck7 ck it was initially the biopsy we did a ck7 it was strongly and diffusely positive ck19 was positive pax8 was dead negative and other negative markers were 20 cdx2 ttf1 and gata3 so ck7 19 uh, someone thought it's a gi or pancreatic pancreatic biliary primary but that's a that's a common mistake which we think a ck19 is very specific of pancreatic biliary ck19 comes almost in every tumor uh, breast is positive thyroid is positive ovary is positive so ck19 does not point to 
panketo biliary uh, tract, but that's what we commonly think is CK7 and 19 positive would be panketo biliary. Uh, so there was something odd. In the MDT, the radiological findings were odd. The clinical presentation was very odd. So the radiologist was not ready to buy that this is a metastatic. He said, they were saying it's mostly a signable kind of a uh, presentation. What about the kidney mass? They did a biopsy from the renal mass and as you can see, it's a very, very low grade conventional renal cell carcinoma, which you can easily see here. So very nice, uh, low grade, uh, uh, low, low ISUP grade uh, conventional RCC, clear cell and there was no problem in this. So unrelated tumors, uh, the kidney mass shows very epithelial ethereal morphology. We raised the possibility of a synovial sarcoma and SYDSSX translocation was requested and uh, this was reported by Dr. Bharat in, and he said almost 100% are showing uh, split signals for SYDSSX. So this is a very, very unusual case of a, uh, uh, epithelial predominant synovial sarcoma with extensive glandular component. It's not a very common tumor. Uh, again, we know synovial sarcoma is a misnomer. It doesn't actually arise from the synovium. It can arise anywhere. But this was actually in the synovium of the knee joint and presenting as a knee joint mass, which uh, someone called Paxit positive and called it RCC. And there was a wild goose chase. So the point is, if somebody says it's a pancreatobility primate, the patient directly becomes a palliative patient. There is no further thing which is done. They may do an MRCP to find the primary, but then that's important. And the renal mass was a low grade uh, renal cell carcinoma. So these are uh, rare tumors that are something described in literature. Obviously, everything is described in literature. So there is always a further clinical course. The patient underwent a right nephron uh, sparing surgery, which was a typical uh, conventional renal cell carcinoma. Uh, so this is how it looked. Uh, the knee mass, the patient was uh, uh, um, underwent a uh, amputation, an above knee amputation. And this was the specimen. You can see that this is a tumor which is involving the lower end of femur and it is also a, a grey white tumour which is seen around here and this is a resected specimen again showing similar morphology with tubules, trabeculae of tumour cells within a hyalinized and somewhat desmoplastic stroma and there was one section, there is only one section where you got a biphasic morphology. So it's in a resection, you found that this is, these are the tubules and the epithelial component and it was very, very focally showing this spindle component. So it was actually a biphasic synovial sarcoma but the sampling was of the common uh, predominant variety which was this. So uh, this is again to show the picture, A1, A3 I have, was there, INI1 shows a mosaic pattern, BCL2 was positive. It was infiltrating the bone, bony trabeculae and destroying the bone. So it's, it's basically a synovial sarcoma with predominantly glandular component. TLE1 was positive as you can see here, nice nuclear positivity for TLE1. In TLE1 picture. So the clinical outcome changed from a palliative to a curative intent. So that's the importance of having an MDT discussion, the value of sitting together, somebody raises a query and says, okay, it doesn't fit into the clinical bill, we need to push further, go the extra mile to find out what this is. So this is what it was. Uh, the patient later on developed a left external iliac lymph node FNSE and showed metastasis. Unfortunately, this patient progressed. We did lose some time in finding the diagnosis, but uh, finally this patient is now under final palliative care. Any questions on this? Madam, any comments? We have presented this in last senior surgical ma'am. Yeah, in the broad clinical behavior is like a cat. Yes. Any more comments? Anybody? I'll move on to the second case. This is a 23 year old male who presented with right flank pain for six months. PET CT revealed a mass arising from upper pole of right kidney, uh, 12 centimeter mass, and renal vein and inferior vena cava showed tumor thrombus. So this is a very young patient with a renal mass with IVC and renal vein thrombus. Patient was evaluated elsewhere and received some chemotherapy elsewhere uh, with some previous diagnosis. But the mass increased in size and that's when the patient got referred to TMH. Uh, he did have three biopsies. I'm not going to details of biopsy because I'll show you the resected morphology and then discuss. 
we were all struggling. So they did a biopsy. The first one showed only hyaluronic tissue. The second one showed some small blue round cells with hyaluronic tissue. And third one also showed predominantly hyaluronic and desmoplastic tissue. So they were struggling what to do with this patient and what was the diagnosis. So a uh, gross examination on, on a resection showed 11 into 5.5 centimeter and the renal vein did show a thrombus. Uh, so this is the picture. You can see that how the tumor is very organoid looking, a blue and a pink mixture as always, but very, very organoid kind of appearance of this tumor. You can see they have very blue looking areas and the center shows a little necrosis, but again a lot of hyalinization, but a very cellular blue looking tumor uh, in a very lobular and organoid kind of a fashion. Higher power to show a lot of hyalinized areas and that's why the biopsy was showing only hyalinized areas because there are huge areas which had only hyalinization and very less. But the other two, the, the tumor did show a very blue appearance. Again, pictures to show these hyaluronic areas, necrosis and some cords and typically of these cells. If you look at higher power, these cells were ovoid, uh, blue looking, uh, vague tubules, vague query rosette kind of appearance. Again, lot of hyaluronization between putting, uh, throwing the cells into single uh, cell strands and uh, sort of Indian filing and long uh, uh, trabeculae and cords. Again, pictures to show different patterns within the tumor. Uh, you can see that there is some necrosis, lot of hyalinization, but again in intercommunicating kind of trabeculae and cords of these tumor cells. There were other areas where there were frank tubules, which makes you think of Wilms tumor definitely when you see a renal tumor in a young patient with uh, this kind of tubules and those uh, blue looking undifferentiated cells, you definitely do think of Wilms and that was our thought process in this. Again, pictures to show you a uh, lot of tubular formations and small kind of disappearance, again lot of hyalinization and distributes. So these are different areas within the tumor and then there are very, very focally uh, squamous kind of appearance with keratin pearls within this tumor. Uh, so these were our issues. Uh, so we thought of uh, synovial sarcoma, we thought of Wilms tumor, we thought of strange PNAT and all that was, those were the thought processes. Young patient with renal vein thrombus. So generally, uh, RCC, synovial and PNATs are the tumor which will have renal vein and IVC thrombus clinically and radiologically. So uh, these were again A1, A3 positive, you can see the tubular uh, pattern more towards the luminal aspect of the, uh, the tumor uh, glandular uh, SNI and glands which you see here, A1, A3 again focally was like this, strong but very focal, again showing the variation in A1, A3. EMA was also focally positive, not everywhere it was not diffuse. Again EMA, picture of EMA to show EMA positivity. Paxate was diffusely positive, completely uh, throughout the tumor in a couple of sections in which it did, all the nuclei were almost positive of Paxate. MIG2, CD99 positive, membranous, not very strong but almost again diffusely positive but a little weaker membranous, some areas were more strong in this tumor. Fly1 was positive but this is not a very good marker and uh, it comes non-specifically in many tumors. Desmin, Synapto, Chromo, Salfour were all negative. WT1 was negative. Cyclin D1 was positive because we did have a, a, a thought process, is it a strain looking clear cell sarcoma or a BCOR kind of a tumor because of a blue looking tumor and unfusion. Cyclin D1 diffuse positive, SAT B2 positive. Again, SAT-B2 positive. So this is only after reading we have done all these markers. Not that run of the mill we do share SAT-B2 in renal tumors. b -core was diffusely and strongly positive. So this is a strange tumor. Again, we did not have much to do away. So is it a b -core sarcoma? Is it a carcinoma? Is it a some other undifferentiated tumor? So A1, A3, EMA, uh, CD99, FLY1, Paxate, SAT-B2, Cyclin-D1 and b -core positive. And Despin, Synapto, WT1 were negative. So any thoughts? So it's, so we, we strongly thought of Wilms tumor, in fact we conveyed to the clinician it's a Wilms tumor, it's got tubules, it's got undifferentiated cells. They gave the patient chemotherapy of uh, Wilms which was not responding and that's why they went ahead and resected the patient and that's when we got the resection. So this immunoprofile was extremely strange, not fitting into anything. We, we don't have an answer to this actually. So we're still confused, we read and these are the tables which we read and we tried to fit into all these tumors, B or CCNB have undifferentiated round cell tumors and then we tried doing some immunohistochemistry and IHCs uh, and, and molecular for these, molecular testing for clear cell sarcoma was done, YWHA fish was negative and this is the 
which have only 3% cells show split signals for YWHA. Giving SPNAT because it's a treatable condition, they can give a long-term chemotherapy, we did, and EWR1 fish was negative, even though MIG2 and FLY1 were positive. Uh, there are certain features which don't fit into anything. 100% uh, of nuclei shows few signals for EWSR1. Sinoval sarcoma is a very strong possibility because that can come weak or focally positive, but generally not this diffuse positive. So it was not fitting into it and SYT SSX1 was also negative. Adult wilms, the morphology definitely fitted the bill. Cytokeratin can come, WT1 can be negative in, in, so that was a very strong and that's why we finally thought of Wilms tumor and we gave it. But uh, to be very frank, this is not a clear cut case and we have struggled. Unfortunately, the patient is progressing and is not doing very well. So these are the differentials which we consider clear cell sarcoma, B core CCNB, uh, Sinoval sarcoma, but none of the IHCs and the molecular fit into one kind of a tumor. So we're still confused. We sent it across for RNA uh, transcriptomic analysis and it showed, I, I don't know Jay, you may be able to tell me, I just got, got the email. So it's a, a WWX ETV6 fusion transcripts were seen in this tumor. So it's something unusual. The point of bringing out this case is there are certain unusual cases which you don't fit into the bill and people do molecular and that's how a newer classification and newer tumors are discovered. When you do a lot of in-depth analysis of such tumors, you will come to know that they are, don't fit the, any of the bill. They, that's, that's when we come across such tumors and, and uh, uh, learn about this. Sorry, I leave it there. Any questions on there? Any discussion? Tanuja Mandi. Madam, Madam, this is got, I got it done from somewhere else actually. Yeah. But this is, this is transcript to me. This is transcript. This is RNA transcript. Madam. This, is, this is not VF. This. Uh, there are junction reads. For RNA transcript, they give junction reads. How many times have they actually have reads between the junctions of two fusion genes? So. What about Bicor? Bicor, they haven't got one. So they have to do a special separate analysis for BCOR and they would do it actually. The point is even if it comes because BCOR is so positive, we may have some strange uh, BCOR positivity, but ultimately it doesn't fit into the bill. And uh, maybe it's just a strange carcinoma, undifferentiated, unclassified renal tumor, which, which is so strongly Paxate, A1A3, EMA positive. So that's the thing. So something overlapping between a carcinoma. So they're they treated, they already resected, remember the patient has progress because it's a very, very high grade tumor actually. The problem was in the biopsy three times we're getting only hyaluronic tissue and some round cells. Yeah, Jay, what adds? I was going to say that uh, Wilms tumor, yeah, we all know that they can be WT1 negative and that's because they do not have the WT1 kind of, you know, the molecular genetic event. There are others which can uh, drive the Wilms tumor. I'm not certain if this probably fits. I'll have to read into it, but perhaps that needs to be considered because it does wait for a Wilms otherwise. Yeah, it does. So adult Wilms. Yeah, yeah, does it, but it did not respond to chemo of Wilms at all. Mm -hmm. It actually progressed and then they, before it could progress to say uh, the uh, IBC thrombus went to heart, they sort of… Mm -hmm. But do the other the films record. respond, I mean the response is as Pardon? similar as the uh, pediatric films? Which one? The adult, adult films, films, yeah. They, they don't behave, behave yeah. yeah, yeah I agree right. with you. They will not respond too much to chemo. So, so that doesn't rule out that it's not films, yeah. So, but adult films generally has morphology like Yes. Morphology and IHC, everything fits. This is uh, somewhat overlap. I'll come to the third and last case uh, quickly. So this is a, uh, this a case I like to show in many meetings because this is something we really chased and we found and good that Prathamesh is also here. So this is a 33 year old male with history of hematuria. Uh, TRBT was done elsewhere and uh, the CT scan showed an ill defined heterogeneously enhancing mass in the left lateral wall of bladder with focal perivesical extension and there were some pelvic and retropetal nodes not too great and not very significant. Uh, patient underwent TRBT and this is what we had. Again, low power showing the cauterized TRBT chips. So this is what we had, a little rather blue looking tumor, not exactly blue, lot of uh, tumor cells, but they're monomorphic even at this, this power. You can see that they are monomorphic cells with very, very thin capillaries uh, around them. You can see them, they are very bland otherwise, um, not, not much pleomorphism in these cells. Again, to show the blandness of these cells with the vascular, thin vascular channels around them, very nice cells, very bland, no pleomorphism, no nucleoli, no mitosis, no necrosis. So this is how the tumor looked under the microscope. So differentials were nested variant of urothelial and paragangloma. In fact, I, I told residents that this is a paragangloma, it's so classical, 
it's got those nested pattern and I can bet on you. So uh, that's when you eat your words back when you get the IHCs. So A1, A3, P60, HMW, CK, GATA3, Synapto, Chromo, all were negative. I was so hellbent on proving to my resident this is Vaparic Angloma that I did GATA, all GATA3, Synapto, Chromo were repeated. But at the end, they had, they had the last laugh. They were uh, actually sitting next to me and said, sir, you are so confident, but it didn't turn out, didn't turn out to be. So A1, A3 was like this. Uh, I don't know the reason for this. It came like this. GATA3 was dead negative. P63 dead negative. So again, the same dis differential we were running around showing in the department, paraganglum was. That's when we thought, is it a metastasis? Did we even did calretin in inhibiting, thinking that it's some undescended testes with some sex cord tumor which is going into the bladder. So all sorts of funny thoughts come when you don't, uh, are, are not able to get, get to the bottom of it. We did some additional markers, CK720, CDX2 because we thought there was something from the colon or something which is coming, although the radiology did not show that. PSA was negative, Mucker negative and Paxate. So CK7 was like this, CK20 was negative and this is a marker which turned out diffuse positive and this was Paxate. So when you get Paxate positive, your thought process goes into Mullerian, thyroid, thymus. So these are the tumors which are Paxate positive. So we thought ki it's something Mullerian, there is some Mullerian rest and this is some Mullerian tumor. He is probably a hermaphrodite and all. These were the thought process which come to your mind because it's a bladder and it's in the pelvis. We tried, we'll do a TTF and thyroglobulin, let us do that. So thyroglobulin came strongly and diffusely positive and TTF1 was diffusely positive. And that's when we suggested that it's probably a metastasis from thyroid. Not probably, it was because TTF, thyroglobulin, Paxate positive. There is no other sort of differential here. So, no known case, no history of thyroid cancer. Then Prathamesh did a PET CT and they found that the bladder mass was there and there was a hypermetabolic right thyroid mass. So, this is the thyroid mass uh, which, is, which has lit up and that's the bladder mass, hypermetabolic uh, lesion, both bladder as well as thyroid. So we called it a metastatic carcinoma thyroid with sort of follicular kind of pattern, not exactly follicular. So this was the USG neck showing a nodule of uh, 13 millimeter in the thyroid. FNSA showed a papillary thyroid carcinoma, you can see the internuclear inclusions, the not too many grooves but then there are some definite inclusions which you can be uh, very, very sure of. So this was a thyroid, uh, uh, a hemithyroidectomy was done for this patient and this is a thyroid which is showing the tumor and very classical nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma uh, with uh, the grooves and the vesicular nuclei, often any kind of nuclei. Although it looked a little oncocytic, at places it did have a little columnar and a tall cell kind of appearance. So this is how they looked and I think everybody would agree this typically and classically looks like papillary, although it is little oncocytic and little tall cell. So on review of literature, uh, we, this is the sort of fourth case in literature which we came across. Solitary bladder mets from a thyroid. We recently have one more case, sir, Prathamish. One more has come actually in bladder. But that's a classical follicular carcinoma from thyroid. So uh, this was what we chased. We were going to sign out the report in the bladder as an undifferentiated. People said we'll call it undifferentiated. Now, I just want to say undifferentiated is called when the tumor has high mitosis, necrosis, and obviously it doesn't show any differentiation. So uh, calling something undifferentiated puts the oncologist totally off track. They will give some random chemotherapy. These are toxic chemotherapies which can cause a lot of uh, uh, side effects to the patients. So going the extra mile, especially in these younger patients, can sometimes pick up these strange kind of tumors. Thank you so much. I'll end there.